Hello Algebra 1B and welcome back to Elimination Part 2. I do recommend that before you go through these notes in this lesson that you feel fairly confident about Part 1 of Elimination just because this lesson is ramping up the fun of solving systems by elimination. Um, so if you're still struggling a little bit with the first part, reach out to us. We can direct you towards some extra practice. We can answer any questions you have to help clear it up. Um, but like I said, you want to you wanna feel decent about part one before you look at this one. So using what we know from part one, there are three ways you can solve graphing, substitution, and elimination. Hopefully at this point, looking at this system of equations, you know just by looking at it that the method we want to use to solve is elimination. Elimination because we don't have a graph to use graphing. and substitution, we don't have an x equals or a y equals given to us. Looking at this system here, we learned with elimination, sometimes when you look at the system, something just is going to eliminate automatically. Is that the case for this system? Well, the answer is no. I know it's not because looking at our x's, nothing's going to eliminate yet. Looking at our y's, nothing's going to eliminate yet. So that means based on what we learned in part one, we're going to have to change one of our equations. We're going to have to change it using multiplication. Now, with part one, we were able to look at one equation and say, ah, if I multiply this by two, by a negative sign, by five, it'll give me the number in the other equation. If we try that for this system, well, looking here at my smaller number, I can't multiply three by anything to get four. And then for our y's, looking at my smaller number, I can't multiply three by anything to get five. So there isn't a number I can multiply one equation by. That takes me to our last example for elimination. If you can't just add them together and make them eliminate, if you can't multiply one equation to make them eliminate, our last option is multiplying both equations. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, a simple way to do it though is start off by choosing which variable you want to eliminate. Does not matter at all. I am going to choose x, you can get the same result by eliminating y. If I want to eliminate x, and we need to multiply both equations so that after we multiply, we get the same number here. Do you know what we could multiply by? Well, lots of times, it's just flipping around these numbers. It's multiplying our top equation by 3 and our bottom equation by four. By doing that, by flipping around the numbers, now we've got a positive 12 and a negative 12. Sometimes there are other ways you can do that. There's like a smaller common number they have than 12, um, but this is just a trick you can use that will always get you the right answer. Once we do that, we want to go ahead and just like in the previous notes, multiply our entire equation. When I do that with my first equation, I'm going to get 12x minus 9y equals negative 12. And then for our second equation, I'm going to get negative 12x plus 20y equals, sorry, dog's barking, uh, negative 32. After we do that, you see this and you should say, ah, yes, that's exactly what I wanted because, there's a dog running around now, because, <laughs> we have an x that's going to eliminate. Um, after this point, everything is like what you did in the previous lesson. We could go ahead and combine our two equations. x would eliminate, y would give us 11y, and then our numbers at the end would give us negative 44. Just like before, we're really happy with this because we've got an equation now with only one variable, so we can finish solving by dividing by 11, and that would leave me with y equals negative 4. Also, like last time, you've got one variable. You need the other one so that we can write our point. So we've got negative 4 for y. To find x, we need a substitute. Now, you can substitute in any of these equations. My advice is use one of the original ones because these are always going to have larger numbers in them. Amaya, it's okay. Crazy dog. 
Um, right, we're substituting. So we've got y equals negative 4. Um, how about this? At home, you try this first equation. I'm going to do the second equation right now. And at the end, we should get the same answer. So you're using the first equation. I'm using the second. When I substitute... This is what it would look like. I solve. I divide. I'm getting x equals negative 4. I hope at home you're getting the same thing for the first equation. Uh, you could always go back and check by substituting both of these values. Let me put this up here. Both of these values into the equations, um, and it's going to show you that your solution is correct. So this is our last resort. I say last resort because sometimes if you do this, if you multiply both equations when it's not necessary, it gives you large numbers unnecessarily. So don't forget to always check for the ways we saw in the first set of notes. Check to see first, can you just go ahead and add the equations to make something eliminate? Maybe you don't need to multiply at all. If that's not the case, then check to see, can you multiply one equation and get something to eliminate? If both of those don't work, then this right here is our last option. If it's not going to automatically eliminate, if I can't just multiply one equation to get it to eliminate, then let's multiply both equations so that we get a variable that eliminates. It doesn't always have to be x either. You can use uh, 5 here and 3 here to get y's to eliminate. Just don't forget to check to make sure that the signs are giving, oops, it's not there anymore. The signs are giving you opposite signs. So this right here gave me a positive, and this would give me a negative. There is one last part of these notes that I want to look at with you, and that is... on the back side of the notes where it says, what if this happens? I'm going to go ahead, I think, and look at the first one under that header. So if we've got 2x plus 3y equals 12, and 4x plus 6y equals 24. Go ahead for a second, if you want to pause this video, see if you know what to do to start solving this system of equations. Okay. Uh, looking at this system, again, it's going to be elimination we want to use because we don't have a graph and we don't have x equals or y equals. We've got our x's, our y's, and then equals to a number. Looking at this system here, it is not necessary to multiply both equations. If I wanted to eliminate my x's, all I have to do is multiply my first equation. Do you know what we would multiply it by? We'd multiply it by negative 2. That way I get a positive 4 and then a negative 4 here. Now when we do that, that's going to give me negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 24. And then I'm just going to copy my second equation down here. 4x plus 6y equals... 24. Now, we did that. We chose to multiply by negative 2 so that our x's could eliminate. And just like we wanted, when we go to combine, our x's are going to eliminate. But <laughs> our y's are also going to eliminate. And then over here on this side, this is going to eliminate. Instead of using the word eliminate or cancel, let's think about what it actually equals. When we say these eliminate, they eliminate because they equal zero. So I'm getting a zero here, I'm getting a zero here, and then on this side, negative 24 plus 24, that equals zero. So I end up getting zero plus zero equals zero, or we can say zero equals zero. Now that's weird. That's different than all the other problems. Remember, we're trying to find x and y to write a point, but I don't have an x or a y left. This isn't saying x equals zero, it's not saying y equals 0. It's not telling me x or y. 
the reason this is happening is because it goes back to what we had talked about in solving systems by graphing with types of solutions. Something like this is going to mean I can't write a point. I can't write a point with an X or a Y. It means there isn't going to be a single solution point for our answer. That is okay. I've lost my eraser. <laughs> there it is. That is okay because there's other options for your types of solutions. Remember we had said under types of solutions in the solve by graphing notes, lots of times those two lines are going to intersect at a single point and your answer is going to be that single solution point. But that's not always the case. Think about what were some of the other things we saw. Well, one option we saw was we saw you could have two lines that are parallel and those parallel lines never intersect at a point. So we would say the answer is no solution. We also saw that you could have two lines that are in the same exact spot that intersect at a lot of different points. And so we said for this, your answer is infinitely many solutions. So going back to what we had, we have zero equals zero once you, you went and eliminated uh, to solve that system. Zero equals zero means there's not going to be a single solution point we can write. Instead, it's going to mean one of these other things. What we do is look at what we are left with. If it's something that's true, these two numbers equal each other, that would mean that our answer is infinitely many solution points. If we're left with something that's not true, like 0 equals 24. 0 never equals 24, and no world would 0 equal negative, or sorry, I'm saying negative. No world would 0 equal 24, so that means there is no solution, because there's no point that could make 0 equal 24. So in these last problems where you get both variables eliminating, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means that it's going to be one of these last options. It means depending on what you're left with, it's either going to be infinitely many solutions or no solution. So that one we were doing, number one, the one with 2x plus 3y equals 12 and 4x plus 6y equals 24, our final answer would be infinitely many solutions. So that would be what you write for your answer. Infinitely many solutions, meaning if you were to graph both those lines, it would look something like this one here. It would be two lines on top of each other. Use what we discussed here to kind of help you with those last ones. Um, again, I hope by the end of all of this that you're loving elimination as much as I do because I think this is really fun. Uh, but if you're not quite there yet, if you're not quite feeling the love that I do for this, please reach out. I'm here to help. I miss you all and good luck with elimination.